All right. Um, okay, so thanks uh, to Tufik and to the whole organizing committee for all the effort. Uh, in the minutes I have, I will try to share with you some recent progress on one a very natural problem that I personally like. It's related to application of enumeration in algorithms, uh, as you can infer from the title. And it's a joint work with uh, these two people you see, Wuz Grisales and Yan Zhuang. Uh, so it's again about trees and in particular ordered trees. Uh, so here, all of us know what these are. We have some ordering of the children for, for each node. And we will also look at the distance from each root, from each node to the root. <clears throat> uh, so, of course, this is called the level of, of a node. So the root will be at level zero, the children of the root at level one, and so forth. And uh, you see all the five ordered trees here uh, with three edges and four vertices. Uh, of course, this is not a coincidence. As we know, uh, they're counted by the Catalan numbers. So what is our problem? So we are at the root of some unknown tree with n edges. And we also have a target node x in that tree that we want to find, but we don't know where this is. Uh, and in addition, we can't do much. Being at a vertex, the only thing we can do is to explore one of the children if it's not yet explored. So uh, yeah, we don't have any additional information here. For example, we don't know how many children we have if we are at a certain vertex, nothing pretty much. Um, and okay, this is a problem for searching, searching task. So we have to search in trees. And when we have searching in trees or graphs, we immediately can think of a breadth first and depth first search. Uh, so here is, here is an example. If we traverse this particular tree uh, with BFS, we will first explore uh, those children, the children of the root, which are at level one. Then we will start with the first child and it, its own children and, and so forth. So, um, and yeah, the, the nodes will be traversed uh, in this order. Uh, corresponding to the labels that you see here. And these labels, I call them BFS cores. Uh, and yeah, formally there, the BFS core of a vertex is the number of nodes visited before that vertex when using BFS. But the reason I'm interested in this statistic is that basically it corresponds to the time complexity of BFS when the target node is this V. Um, and alternatively for DFS, we introduce DFS cores for, for our vertices. Uh, and <clears throat> OK, so as I said, we want to compare the two algorithms. So here comes the first pretty easy question. So if my target node is chosen uniformly at random among all the nodes in all these trees, then which of the two algorithms will be better uh, in expectation? Well, it turns out the answer here is trivial uh, because we basically put the labels one to n in some order uh, on our nodes. And uh, since each node has the same chance to be selected as the target, then we basically have the same expectation. Uh, okay, that's that's good. Uh, when when we have this case, the situation is sort of trivial. But what if the target has a fixed level? So let's say our target is at certain level L then which of the two algorithms is better in expectation? So we see here an example when n is 3 and l is 2. 
the target node could be one out of these five circled nodes. And we should pay attention also that the distribution over the trees is not uniform anymore. Okay, so uh, we sample over the nodes, not, not over the trees. And another nice thing about this particular problem is that we have a nice intuition about the answer, but we don't quite know the answer in advance. So the intuition is that for small values of L, DFS should be probably faster, and for large L, DFS should be faster. But is this indeed the case? Do we have a place of transition, a so-called threshold? Is it unique? Um, we will try to answer these questions. OK, so fortunately, we have this fact by Dershowitz and Zax uh, in 1980, which gives us the number of nodes residing on level L. So this means that it suffices to find these two quantities, which I called total B and total D. And these are just the summations of these BFS scores and DFS scores for all these nodes on level L. So our goal will be to compute these two quantities and to compare them. OK, and here is our first result. This is a surprisingly simple formula for total D. <coughs> it's given by uh, this uh, expression L times this binomial coefficient. And to prove this, we use the well-known bijection between ordered trees and uh, dike paths. Uh, so when we perform DFS, basically, um, when we go away from the root, we put an up step. When we go closer to the root, we put a down step. So what we do here in this proof is to map every such tree to the corresponding dike path. And we also observe that. Uh, a note a note in our tree at level L corresponds to um, a point on level L in the dike path. And with some additional observations, we basically um, showed that total D is given by this expression. And then uh, to prove our claim, it suffices to show this identity here. And we prove that identity combinatorially, uh, giving interpretations of, the bo of both sides with some lattice paths. Here, an interesting remark is that uh, basically, if both L and N uh, approaches infinity and N is uh, bigger than L asymptotically, then roughly the expected DFS score is n over 2, uh, regardless of L, which is interesting. So I move on to total B. The situation is a bit more complicated for total B. So for total B, uh, the situation is more complicated, but we managed to use some generating functions. I will not get into details here. But we introduced this generating function, uh, FL, and it turns out that the generating function for BL, uh, sorry, for total B, is related to this FL. We expressed it. And then, interestingly, it turns out that both of these functions are related to uh, so called Fibonacci polynomials and the Catalans one generating function. So in particular, these are the, uh, this is the result we got for these two generating functions. And uh, we use that together with Lagrange inversion to obtain uh, this uh, summation formula for total B. However, we want to compare this with um, with total D, and this form of this summation cannot help much. So uh, we needed to rewrite this, and we managed to do that. So 
we we wrote it in that way. So this is pretty much like what we have for total D. The problem is that here in the numerator, this coefficient of this polynomial PL depends on L. And uh, this is indeed a problem because, okay, for constant uh, L, this would work, but we want L which depends on N. Okay. Uh, so we needed to to use a different form for total D. Uh, but I'm mentioning this result because of the leading coefficient for which we proved uh, that it's given by this uh, cubic polynomial of L. And we use that proof later on. So in particular, this identity boils down to proving that identity and this one has a nice interpretation. So uh, yeah, we, we were happy with that combinatorial proof uh, for this theorem. And yeah, we use that later, as I said, but uh, again, we needed to rewrite total B one more time. And we did this. So uh, yeah, we, we used that expression for total B. Here, the nice thing is that these functions H are bounded uh, when L is big O of root N. And this allowed us basically to get our main result, which is uh, here. So uh, we basically got the asymptotic of this total B uh, when L is big O of root N. So as a result, we concluded that when L is asymptotically smaller than root N, then BFS is faster in expectation. Uh, and in addition, um, for some positive constant C, we have a threshold at C root N. So there, uh, B DFS became better. However, when L is asymptotically larger than root N, we cannot say much using these tools. And we are currently investigating this case with some uh, uh, past results using, we try to use some uh, past results and theory of random trees and results of David Alders and other people. But anyways, uh, just some experimentation showed us that most probably this is the only transition that we have at roughly root n. Uh, and it would be interesting to investigate here whether this is a coincidence or not. Uh, this is a result that was already mentioned two talks ago, uh, that the average height of these trees is uh, roughly root n. So what turns out is that probably we have a single transition around the average height. And it might be interesting to see whether it's the same for other kinds of trees, let's say binary trees, or it's just a coincidence. Okay, and I have a few further directions that I can talk about. I don't have time, I believe, but um, yeah, um, I can just list a few extra questions that are interesting. Indeed, one can ask several interesting questions here. Um, and yeah, I might stop. Thank you.